And somebody, and I joined their Discord, and somebody said, we have a grandma in here? And somebody else says, yeah, you're famous, yeah. Is that wow, grandma? And I went, the next thing I know, they're coming onto the stream and, and do not consider 50s old. Do not consider 60s old. You're only old is what you think, see? So I can't use age as getting worse, right? I got to continue to get better. Wow is the hardest thing I've ever done. Even climbing the mountain was easier than wow. Then World of Warcraft came out. I looked at it and said, I know my personality. I, I can't do anything <laughs> half, half. I go all out. So then they took me down the chain to Molten right. Core, but it was to go to the dungeon whatever that one, BRD, I think. And I was scared to death. I could hardly control my character, let alone go down that chain. Firstly, very warm welcome to you. Uh, wow, Grandma, like, I've been watching your content for years now, actually. And, you know, the first time I saw your stream, I was actually really inspired because I told my friend back then that was playing WoW with me on Discord, I said, if I ever get to your age and I'm half as passionate about WoW as you, I will be a happy camper. Because I truly find a lot of inspiration from the love you have for the game. So, you know, I don't want to steal your thunder, but let me turn it over to you. Why don't you just quickly introduce yourself to people who have been living under a rock and, you know, haven't been watching your streams? Well, I am Wild Grandma 78 and um, I, first of my life, I raised six kids and then I did mountain climbing and then we retired and then I got into gaming and building computers. And so um, my first computer that I actually built was in 1998. Actually, I had that one built and then from then on, I built my own. I got two Voodoo cards, a one gigabyte hard drive. And we thought that was the limit. Wow. And we had Windows 98. We moved on from Windows 95. Okay, slight tangent. Who taught you to build gaming PCs? Slight tangent before we go into main topics. Who taught you how to build gaming PCs? Okay, well, I, the company that I said to this company that I hired to build the computer, wow. I ordered all the parts myself from Newegg. I think it was Newegg even back then before they were big. And I, I, so I researched on my little cheap Packard Bell that was used from the beginning and, and researched everything that I could. That's on dial up, mind you. It was not fancy internet. And so I ordered the Voodoo cards and all this stuff. And they built, I said, can I watch? Which I was oblivious to whatever they were doing. And back then you had to mm. put more into a computer than you do now. Now you throw the motherboard yep. and you got a video card and RAM basically in a power supply. Back then we had to have a sound, a wow, sound card, crazy. a network card and all this other stuff. So I was oblivious. Well, he, they could not get these Voodoo drivers working. So I went into a store that was called Future Shop, which is like Circuit City and, right. well, that don't even exist, Best Buy. And this kid says, well, I can get your drivers working. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, it's not a problem. And so he said, I'll come to your house. So he came, he got the computer working, and you know, I said, can I pay you? And he says, actually, we need a babysitter for my three-year-old because we're having another baby and we don't have anybody to watch. Uh, I can do kids, I said. Amazing story. So he's story. the one that taught me to build computers. And he was, he Future Shop closed, and so he got a job at a private computer store. And he called me up and he said, I've got 10 computers that need to be reformatted. I've typed out the list because Windows 98 wasn't just right. download it and that's it. You had to go through these steps. He said, I've typed down the instructions. I want you to install Windows oh, 98 on all 10 of those computers. So I came down at this shop and I installed Windows 98 on 10 computers. And then he just kept teaching me. And then I actually taught my one of my sons wow. how to build computers. You had a coolest mom and ever. <laughs> so I always had, yeah. I always had two computers. I'd never wanted, once I got into gaming, I never wanted to be with one that was broke. So I do, I've showed my viewers the pictures of my first ones. I think my cases oh. back then were in win and I always used Intel. The first AMD I had was the computer before this one. But it's a nice segue though, you know, your history about gaming, okay. because I wanted to ask you, like, you know, we, we see you as a successful streamer now, but. How did you even get into World of Warcraft in the first place? Like, what led you to World of Warcraft? 
a lot before World of Warcraft because I started 98. World of Warcraft came out in 2004. So there was Oregon Trail. I played Myst and Riven the puzzle games. I knew the young men who created the game. They practiced it on the youth group. They even sent uh, one of our friends to Europe to because they were big into the graphics. And back then, they were big into the graphics and wanted the architecture to look like Europe and stuff. So those were hard puzzle games. And the... Mm. The with the voodoo cards, I got some kind of space game. I don't know what. And then I tried Quake. Wait, how old were you when you played Quake and Unreal Tournament? Well, 98 would have been two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 56, 50, in my in almost 60, well, 58 to whatever, you know, because I didn't start any gaming till after 98 when I got the fancier computer. And so your kids are all grown up and then, you know, you are, I guess, retired and you figured like, hey, I'm bored. I just want to play video games. Is that kind of how it started? Yeah, I just, I mean, I needed a new hobby, right? I had mountain climbed, but then they moved us to the mountain climbing. I wanted to be known as Grandma Rainier, having climbed Mount Rainier six times and the other mountains. I was obsessed with mountain climbing, but then my company moved me back to Eastern Washington and the training fell downhill and I couldn't, and you need to train to climb those kind of mountains. So, and then, like I said, I was a sales manager and I was traveling with Wonder Bread. I had to travel Montana, Idaho, Eastern Washington, and I was on the road all the time and hated it. So I was so happy when I got to retire. But I know for sure it was 1998 when it started, but I was terrible at Unreal Tournament and, and Quake. I liked Unreal better than Quake, but I, w I wasn't any good. You I play left-handed. Yeah, because back then there wasn't left-hand controls, right? I, I don't know, like back in the days. Well, we don't really have left-handed right, controls right. like I would like right now. But uh, I just made, you know, like, like well, move. I'll, I'll get to that later. But anyway, then I tried other games. Then I, I used to hang out at Circuit City all the time, and, and they would say, do you want a job? <laughs> no. Well, you know more than we do. And I went, well, that's because I'm inquisitive. And this young man introduced me. You know, Amazing. He, we kept in contact all the time. Obviously, then I was babysitting two kids, and then they had a third one. And uh, so then the big thing was StarCraft came out. And Circuit City, they, the guys, I mean, I, I talk too much now. I talked a lot when I hung out at the store. I mean, how many older, well, do not consider 50s old. Do not consider 60s old. You're only old is what you think, see? So I, ha I hung out with those and start, they were so excited about StarCraft. So I got StarCraft and hooked it up and I played online. It was really weird to play online. But I played a Terran because you could build that, your fort, I, I forget now what it was called, but I could raise it up and move it higher up back then and nobody could get to me if the Zergling hacks didn't come right. over the hill and stop me from mining. And, and how was it like playing your, you know, such a online competitive game? Like you said, it felt weird. Like how, how was it like, like, did you get to you this competitive thing? Well, right. it was phone. Right. It was phone line for one thing, and I'm trying to remember back how we found anybody to even play. I think we must have had a site that we could go to, but you you had to kind of scroll through, very old fashioned, scroll through to find somebody right. to play with. You know, so I that's been a long time ago. I don't remember exactly. And I and I played StarCraft and then I played StarCraft 2 right. and then I bought Warcraft 3. Didn't really know what I was doing. I never played the other Warcrafts. Didn't really know what I was doing. I can still see the guy standing there and I'm supposed to do some questions. And I don't think I ever got very right. far, but then World of Warcraft came out. Mm -hmm. So the friend that taught me to build the computer says, you need to play that. I looked at it and said, I know my personality. I will... I, I can't do anything <laughs> half, half. I go all out and I'm afraid I will spend right. way too much time on that game. And my husband's not a gamer. My kids are not gamers. The grandkids were little. I, I have a picture of him sitting at a computer playing something, Man. but it was not World of Warcraft. I wish my mom played video games, you know, like 
she never understood me. Um, but no, I love my mom. Don't get me wrong. I love my parents, love them to death, but they never really understood how much I love games, why I played games. And it was always kind of a, a distance in terms of my hobbies, right? But, you know, I, I would love if my grandma played WoW, like that would be amazing. Um, but, but sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please go on. Oh, that's, that's fine. So I waited about two months. So I think it was in December. So Warcraft, World of Warcraft's about two months old. And his wife showed me, uh, I think we were in Goldshire, Stormwind, and got on her bird and flew. Look, you can fly. So I bought the game and she gave me one gold to get me started. One gold was a lot of money back then. So, I mean, because... Copper was it. And so I started with a mage. I still have my mage. Right. I named her Ephod. So all of my Alliance right. characters have Ephod in their name. Well, I, that's not totally <laughs> true because I made a remix one and she's not. She's right. not. Oh, well, she is. Yes, she is. She's Gephod. So she has Ephod in it. And. And did WoW hook you in right away from day one? Like, how, ex tell me about your first day, yeah. Yeah. I used to play like 15 to 18 hours a day. And my husband, my husband would go, you know, back then, World of Warcraft, they actually even had like AA for alcoholics. They had World of Warcraft AA type things because people, it was rather sad. People wow, were not feeding insane. their kids. They were not getting off and they were becoming ill. It was actually not a good thing because people were so engrossed and so addicted to this game that their family life and their social life, yeah. So it was, and, and I was, of course, I, I had a husband. I fed him and I turned the covers down on the bed so he could go to bed. But I, so like my, so I made a mage and right. I was like level seven wandering around Elwyn <laughs> Forest and the Murlocs were just, killing me. And so somebody came up right. to me and said, I think you need a guild. You're going to need some help. So I right. joined Allied Militia and that was my first guild. And they were a, a lady and her husband played. She was the, they were co-GMs with not her husband, but her and this other gentleman. And so they made Allied Militia. And so, um, I was so lost in this game. There's there's so much back then even. And of course, we could not fly. You guys play classic vanilla and classic <laughs> this. It is not the same. Yeah, you walked everywhere. We <laughs> did not fly. We did not get a mount till we were level 40 and we were down in Stranglethorn by then. And we didn't, our training took all my gold. And so I stopped training right. stuff. You can't train everything. Finally got the hundred gold to get them out, but I had people. The first time I went to Angoral Crater, I had right. it was a guild called the Hand, and they were really, really helpful with me. I was still in Allied Militia, but they were helpful. And I remember looking at the map coming into Angoral. It was blank. Mm. There was nothing on the map, and she knew right where she was going, and I was going. I mean, this is how dumb I was. I was going, wow, you know how to find that? I don't see nothing. Yeah. Well, obviously, she'd already been there and cleared the map. But I didn't know that. I thought she was just brilliant and that she could get there. Then they also wow. took me to Nomergan. I think I went there <laughs> twice in my life. That place was, I was lost. But I wanted to ask you, like, you know, those 15, yeah. 18 hours that you played, like, did you... Did you, f because, okay, when I first played WoW, you had this experience like, wow, shit, I've never played a game like this before. It instantly kind of drew me in. Like when you're playing Warcraft 3, Starcraft, did you play for 15, 18 hours a day? Not like, not like World of Warcraft. Nothing held my interest like World of Warcraft. I mean, I, I probably played a lot, but it wasn't like World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, you get so, I mean, I love my characters, you know, in, in, a love that's different than real life love, but I really care about my characters. So then they took me down the chain to Molten right. Core, but it was to go to the dungeon, yeah. whatever that one, BRD, I think. And I was scared to death. I could hardly control my character, let alone 
go down that chain. So those are memories that I have. Well, then we got leveled to, and then we raided Molten Core. Yeah. But to get 40 people, we had to kind of get in with another guild because we couldn't get 40. So my guild killed Ragnaros wow. the day before Burning Crusade came out. I, I didn't see Nutsider. I remember I stopped at Molten Core 40 as well. Because I was just like, you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But like, whilst your first raid, like, what did it feel like being able to see like 39 other players on screen, you know, playing alongside you? How did that feel? <laughs> because you grew up, you know, yeah. Well, what, what did what did we have back then? We didn't even have, I didn't, use, we didn't use Mumble and I don't think Ventrilo, there was something before Ventrilo. Yeah, it was TeamSpeak. Okay, so. <laughs> and nobody ever hung out back then on it. You only got on for that. And the only mm. marks they had was a hunter mark to put on something. I was a mage, so the first <laughs> boss, all I did was decurse, 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 decurse. That's the only job I had. But right. it was my, you know, but we loved it. But we also didn't clear every week. And I found out we went to go kill Regnerus because we were down to Regnerus. And it was the week before Burning Crusade. And it hmm. said the instance was full. Somebody was giving, when we didn't make, somebody in our guild was giving them, they were giving our lockout to other pugs and stuff. And the friend that taught me to build computers was in there. And I said, what are you doing? I didn't know nothing back then. He, he left and he said, I'm sorry. I said, "Yeah, we came to get the kill and you guys, now we can't even get in there because you guys did it. And we talked to Blizzard. Blizzard don't know anything about that. Are you still friends with that. this guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His daughter, the oh, three-year-old, uh, just had a baby. She's married and just had a baby. That friendship is amazing. But So the next week, they, they didn't get in there and we killed Ragnaros. But I mean, that was, I didn't even understand that. And also the lady that was the GM, her son was seven years old back then. He played a rogue. Mm. He They wouldn't let him talk. But he knew every weapon. He played just as well as anybody. That's amazing. That's a crazy story. He was, he, yeah, Holy. he was valedictorian of his high school class. He's graduated from college. He still only plays a rogue and he still plays. And I got to meet him at BlizzCon. I could imagine a lot of these friendships playing out, right? Like, what is that like for you? Because, you know, you went through the corporate world, you retired, and then you thought you were just playing video games as a hobby. And then now suddenly you're meeting people from all over the world just because of World of Warcraft. Like, how does, did you even imagine this as your life? Like, when you retired? No, I, I did not. I, I didn't know anything. But, I mean, I got to know the people in that guild. And we did end up a couple, of, because I tend to want to push... The problem back with 40 men, we would mm, get somebody yep. geared up and then they'd leave to a better guild. So it made it very difficult to progress because they didn't stay through the hard times to, to get us through. And they would go off to Carpe Diem and different big guilds and we would lose our, then we had to find another tank, then we had to find this. But I had a mage, I made a druid, I made huh. a pally and I made a warlock. I didn't play any of them, but the mage, but then we started traveling in 2000. Well, mm -hmm. we started traveling in the motorhome. So I'm. So my husband thought he was being nice and paid for a satellite internet on top of the motorhome. And the guy putting it up says, "You're not going to like this. It's not going to play your game." I went, "What?" I had the best latency I could get was 900, and that was with FuseNet. I had a three second delay. So when we were in Zul Grub, they let me with my mage attack first <laughs> because I was going to be three seconds too late. And they finally said, "Right, uh, you're going to, you can't do this. Uh, you can't play. Uh, so then we'd go to different towns and I'd immediately run to the internet store and come back with a modem and stuff. And he goes, I paid all that money and you're not. Yep. I said, I can't even download a patch. Wait. Uh, we even took it on a 25 day caravan to Mexico in Mexico and put it on a train and stuff. So I had internet. I could do email right. and that kind of stuff. I was, um, I used it some, but it was not good. I remember when we were in Indiana, I tried to get a better signal and I went, I was standing on it. They had an outside cabana and I brought a laptop. At that time, I didn't play the way I play now because I would not be able to use right. a laptop now because of the way I play. Wait, hang on. You didn't miss a single rate even when your internet was bad? 
I just always found a way. I, I, I took, we were at a hotel. We stayed at a hotel. I took my tower and my monitor into the hotel right. room. They were supposed to have good <laughs> internet. They did not. So I went down to the desk. It was a Best Western. Went down to the desk and said, if I bring my tower and monitor in here, can I hook up to your internet? So no, he let me, he, the, night stop, the night guy watched me play, watched me raid. So I carried my tower down and my monitor down and hooked it up. They actually had internet hookup in the kind of the cafeteria. So then he, right. he would come in and watch me play. Yeah. And because I didn't want to miss. I have, an, I have a picture of another time that I didn't want to miss Raiden. It was Christmas and my kids did not want me. Uh, I was in my granddaughter's bedroom and she's like 16 or 17. She said, they, my son come in. You can't be in here. Chrissy needs to go to bed. I'm not having her in our room. I said, that's fine. I got a 50 foot ethernet cord. Hooked it up to their modem and I went out in the garage. So I, I set my monitor on my tower and I put the keyboard on the, her piano bench and I sat on a cooler with two sweatshirts on and I raided. So I have a picture of that. I have a picture of that that I showed. So, all right. So, you know, you got into WoW. You're super passionate. You love this game. When did you start streaming WoW? And how did that even start? I did not. Well, my husband's been gone eight years and I was in the guild. I had my own guild. I'm going to back up on you a little bit, okay? Because this is 19, 20 years, you know? So I'm going to move on because when I had my own guild for eight years, it was, I had a really popular guild and, and they people would say, how can you have such a great community guild and still do high-end content. Because in Lich King, we had four ten, I ran four 10 mans and two 25 mans uh, every week because I like to raid most of all. I, don't, I know no lore. I don't know, I'm not into the story. I just want to kill bosses. I want to get gear and I want to progress. So anyway, um, that was, I loved my guild and then Mythic Raiding killed it because we got some egos in there. They wanted to stay in Camelot, but they wanted their own bank slots and they wanted their own people. And Thunderhorn was kind of going horde side and I'm Alliance. And so other guilds were having trouble. So one guild closed his down, came to ours, thought they could split their people and we could both have a Mythic team. They all wanted to go with him. So then, my other people said, kick them out. So we kicked them out. And then I moved my one druid to Storm Rage. And I still have Camelot, but it's not there. No, I mean, it's not functional. And I cried a lot because my heart is into the people and the, and, and the love that I put into this game. And um, it was very sad that I watched it fall apart. So then they wanted me to be the GM over here on Stainridge and named it Stormridge and named it. And immediately we had drama and I said, I don't need this. I don't need any of this. So I gave, I said, I'm not being GM. So uh, that was, they, but we stayed a guild, but people left and formed another thing. And so it never was great. And then we um, started, communities started forming and wow. And guilds started kind of going apart. And so the one boss, I'm trying to think of which boss. I, I, I have a memory, but I lose the, these bosses' names. But it was the first community I was in was the boss where we had to have a warlock on each side and then they had to clear stuff and then come back, whatever. I think we had, I had 300 and some pulls in a pug on that until it finally got it. And then we ended up with over 400 to help other people get that. But, and my druid has over 900 days played because I started healing with her and Kara, my, my one druid, but I have six druids now, so, but she's my heart. So then you said, how mm. about streaming? Well, this, these people that came and got me to go to Stormrage, especially one of them kept saying for a year because I did lose two thirds of my income. I, I kept saying, I need to, I'm going to have to get a job or something because, you know, it's, mm. I wasn't expecting a death he says you need to be streaming and i said who is going to watch an old person play a game i just i i had never watched a stream really i i didn't know anything about it 
And so he kept on for a year and kept on for a year. Well, you you need to. And I said, so I decided one day, that's me, it's, it's a whim. Okay, I went to Best Buy, bought a camera, come back, called a guy that I knew. And he come up and set up Streamlabs. And that was it. I didn't know no, I didn't know nothing. We turned the, I had two computers that I'd built. And I still have, I, I reformatted one that was about 12 years old. It still was Windows 10 and, and, and a good one, but I, I just gave it to a friend that I knew couldn't have, didn't have money. And so I gave that to him. And so I'm still running. I keep my, my other one I built. I, isn't that crazy? I can't get rid of that one. It's the last one I built because I didn't build these other two. I had uh, Pison built them for me and, and I met him through the viewers and he's become a good friend and he wanted to build them. Well, he went immediately, immediately he went and announced all over Storm Rage, wow, Grandma 78 is streaming now. You need to, I mean, I went, what? I was scared to death. What? All these people come to check from Storm Rage checking me out and I didn't know nothing. You know, I just went, I had this little camera and this, and I just, so I just started playing the game and, and but he's running around and telling every Storm Rage and now Captain, I said, stop announcing that. No, we need to let people know you're on here. And I went, so uh, the first part was scary. I, it was a world that I didn't know anything about. The first dream I really watched was Max and Nyalotha. And I was so impressed with Max's leadership and his call outs that he did on that boss fight. I was enthralled. I didn't miss nothing. And I fell in love with Max. And you know, Yeah, and, and you met him at BlizzCon. I saw the clip. That's, that's a very wholesome moment, by the way. I, I, I met him at the BlizzCon private party, got my picture. And then I got to live stream, which was, yeah. we're supposed to be that at the end of this. Talk. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> so we'll, I won't, but he took, he took the time to come by and see me. And he's the only person that's watched me play left-handed. And he looked at that and he goes, I never seen that before. And I said, well, I made it up. And he said, well, nobody's dying. So I guess it works. <laughs> so That's a great story. Um, yeah. So, you know, like, kind of kind of exp like tell me right like you know you have started streaming and what does this community mean to you because obviously you ran a guild before right and but now you are actually live talking to people building your own community how has that changed your life like what does streaming mean to you i look as i look forward to my streamers every single night and i am so fortunate that i have so many that that are here every single night. I'm going, you know, it's like you're meeting up with family. I had somebody come on last night and said, you got a new grandchild. Amazing. So it's a new follower. So I was like, I said, you're <laughs> the grandchild or did you just have a baby? I said, no, you know, but uh, right. streaming at first was scary. And there, and some mm. things happened that scared me till I got some good moderators. I have fantastic moderators. Uh, they stay up way past their bedtime yeah. for me. And I and I keep going. I'm not giving them a lot because they're Eastern time. Yeah. And I'm staying up to five o'clock. And so it's eight o'clock for Scarlett and Lindy and, yeah, super and all of them. So, uh, but but I was scared. Some people were making copies of my stream oh, and calling it theirs and just changing a, a number. And I'm going, and then they would put bad things on there and I'm going, I don't want that mm. kind of reputation. That's not me. And one of them, they were following and they would turn it into Twitch and Twitch wouldn't do nothing. I, I'm, I almost quit over that. I was so afraid. Yeah. And they kept telling me, don't quit, don't quit. And I'm mm. going, they said they do that to everybody that because they, and I, I it, do you remember those days, Kamali? Yeah, it was, it was scary, but we didn't quit. And I have streamed the only days I've missed, I missed for BlizzCon and I missed because I came back with COVID from BlizzCon. But other than that, I'm here every single night. One time I was so tired. I don't like to give up. <laughs> I'll be yawning away and I'm going, I, I don't, I don't want to get off yet. I don't want to get off yet. And uh, <laughs> uh, Azrael, you knew that. 
So anyway, I, I, I thought I'm just going to lay on the couch for a couple. I said, I'll be right back. Right. An hour later, I come back. My poor viewers thought I had a heart attack or something. They were all, they were all worried. That's insane. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> yeah, they remember that. But what does my viewers mean to me? My viewers mean everything to me. And we have a, mm. you know, we keep it very PG. We keep it. I want every person to feel welcomed. There are so many struggles for people out there. And if if I can show some, give them love and make them yep. feel wanted and loved or feel better or whatever, then that's what I want to do because that's how I try to live my life. I love it. That's beautiful. And so my viewers, the stream is my viewers. Your, your stream is nothing and without your viewers. You guys are awesome. The other thing that, you know, before we started the stream, what I immediately felt from you is that you have this wealth of life experiences that I just feel like just by hearing what you think about certain things, I get to learn a different perspective in life. So, um, you know, I, I have, I'm not surprised at all you've grown to become so successful and, and that's absolutely amazing. I'm curious though, what does your grandkids, your, your kids think about how successful you are uh, on Twitch now? Like, like, do they ever ask you like, about streaming and, and whatnot? For the most part, no. Uh, my daughter is a high school French teacher. Right. Her kids know about it. She has a, um, and and she did have them come on. I usually miss it because they're not on. I a Scarlet's the one that let me know. And then I have one son. He's an IT person, but he doesn't game and he knows nothing. He comes on once in a mm. great while to make sure right. I'm okay because he lives in a different state. Other than that, he don't game. Uh, like I said, my, my one son, they chased me out into the garage and the grandkids are spread out all over and they're not into gaming. And but hey, you built a wonderful family here online. I just want you to know that. And you know, just from just reading chat as we talk, I can sense like they are very bothered to you. And I'm so happy that you found this place because you know um, there was a moment, like you said, where you you didn't even think of streaming, and I'm glad you pushed through with that. You know, you did it on a whim, and that's great. Because I, I've talked to a lot of people on this podcast, and I've never felt so happy to hear someone succeed. Because I think you deserve all these, um, and I wish when I'm at your age, I have the same kind of passion and love for for something that 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 you know I, I hold dear to me. Um, so that's really inspirational. Thank you. I wanted to ask you. Um, World of Warcraft though, like you've played it for so many years, right? You've played it since the early days. Um, kind of tell me like, you know, World of Warcraft has its ups and downs. There were bad times, good times. Shadowlands was a good example of like a bad time. Did it ever affect you? The, the good times and bad times and well? The bad time was my guild splitting and the guilds watching the guilds kind of dissipate. I'm not into the lore, so I don't get disappointed with expansions. Because I don't know where the I mock was probably my least favorite, only because I didn't want it. What does the pandas have to do with this? So I now I'm now hearing that the pandas were in World of Warcraft 3, which I didn't like I said, I didn't get through. So the expansions to me are that what I hated about each expansion is being grounded again at the very beginning. I hated because I don't Blizzard says you can see more of the stuff if you're grounded. I can see plenty flying. I don't need to be grounded, but I hated being grounded on each expansion and being from purples to greens again. And and then I, I remember back in the vanilla, you know, to get a blue item unless you were a top raider was hard. I did Ubers over and over to get a blue chess piece. And so they probably, my druid finally got a tier 1.5 through some bunch and it was a purple. But then you you would be back to greens again and like starting over. So those things I, but as far as the story, I wasn't into the story and I, did, I don't like questing particularly and I don't usually read them. So then I find myself wasting time because I didn't read it and I got to go back. But uh, so I don't, you know, Lich King was a favorite in the fact that my guild was strong and, and we got heroic Lich King down, which split a lot of guilds and it, it didn't us, you know, it was not easy. Um, but I also played uh, during, I've never quit Warcraft, but I had friends that talked me into Terra. 
talked me into Rift, talked me into a Star Wars thing. I leveled some characters, but they just didn't hold the place that WoW has. And the people, WoW is a social game. And I, you can go out there and play alone, but you're missing a lot if you're not able to be in, in the social. And I, I feel kind of bad for new ones that come, and I probably fail at this because I'm so pushing for my own progression that sometimes I look back and go, Grandma, you're being a little bit selfish because new people come in there and they're overwhelmed. They're totally overwhelmed. We had a new one come on and he's trying. And, and I know Hakuna has offered to help him because she said she's more casual. But people say, do you, do you want to heal a two key? And I find myself going, no, no, I'm going to do a 10. And then I go, so I apologize. I, I just, I, that's just a pro, that's a problem. I, I feel, you know, once my vaults are filled, then of course, you know, we all have that competitive fire in us. And I think what's what's really cool is you have that in you. Um, and you still want the very best for yourself, you know, even after playing this game for so long. And I think that's like respectable. I think your friends can understand that as well. And, and I think it takes a lot of humility to kind of apologize as well. So I think you're kind of good on the front, honestly. But I kind of picked up on something that you were saying, you know, like you, you mentioned that Raf was one of the best times you had a great setup. There's something about raiding that you just love and and you led so many teams can you talk a bit about why why do you love raiding so much there's you know that's why i never understand why people quit but you know if it's mm. 400 kills but you do it as a team and to kill this boss and see it drop and and be with your teammates that you play the game with uh it's just an adrenaline rush you know and it's it's we accomplished it together and I know that even in our 25 mans for Heroic Lich King, if somebody was missing, all, you get two people missing and it throws everything off. I mean, we are a team. I, when, when I had my own guild, I tried to talk about respect. And I would tell my people, remember, there's real people behind these cartoon characters, real people that's rushed home from work to get here. And if you just, especially in a 10 man, I said, if you don't show up and we're running 40 people for four 10 mans and you don't show up and I don't know about it, then we've got pugging back then to bring somebody in was not as easy. And then I, so I, I mean, I'd have one, he would say, I'm home, I'm in, the, I'm getting in the shower and I'll be right there. But he would let me know ahead of time. And so I was pretty strict about that. And because I taught respect, I have one cute story. I call it a life experience for one young man back in BC. Then he wanted to borrow some gold. And I said, okay, I will loan you this. I forget. I don't know the exact amount. So I'm going to make up an amount, let's say a thousand gold. And he's what he wanted to borrow. I said, but you will pay it back. Okay, I, I will. Okay, so I loaned him the gold. And this is when we were farming elementals in the ground and you would get stuff. And so uh, that was how you, you made some money in the auction house and stuff. So he kept putting it off. I said, I expect you to pay me back. Well, you got gold. I said, that's not the point. The point is, if you say you're going to do something and you borrow something, you need to pay it back. This is your real life experience. He was like 16, grumble, 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 grumble. So I said, all right, I'll go out there with you. I'll keep you company. So we went out there and we, we farmed. And he said, so you're going to give me the stuff? I said, no, I'm going to sell it myself. I said, I'm just here to keep you company. I said, borrowing and paying back doesn't mean I'm going to go out here and earn it. And so he, he ended up paying it all back. But I, I went out there with him, but I made him pay it back. And I love the part where you, are, you, you hold your raiders um, accountable in terms of time and whatnot. It, it's, it's, it's very clear to me why they, they raid with you. I think not only is it because it, it's clear to me that you build a very healthy community, it's wholesome, but at the same time, you, you're tight on, on things like punctuality and, and being prepared and whatnot. I think it's, it's just enjoyable to raid with people like that. So I, I really appreciate that. So that's, that's amazing. Um, what's the proudest moment in, in World of Warcraft for you? Was it one of these raids? Like what's, what's the best fight? Is it the Lich King one? Like what's, what's your most memorable raid? Wow, that's really hard. 
I, I I don't know. Lich Lich King was heroic. Lich King. I I was told by other guilds, be careful because it's breaking guilds. And I still have the video of my ten man killing Professor Herrick, Professor Putricide, and Saint Gregosa. And I don't have the Lich King one, but uh, I look at the fight now with Professor Putricide and go, that was really simple. <laughs> Then it was hard for us back then. I mean, the room was almost filled with, I mean, all he's doing is sucking up this green stuff and we're killing ads. And, it was, you know, it's like the mechanics are so much harder now. But but at the time, Lich King was, it was difficult, but we stuck it out, you know. And um, those are highlights. But as far as any one boss or any one raid, I, I just move on to the next thing. I move on to the next thing. And and I was Dragonflight. You know, people talk about WAD. I love my garrison because I hate farming. So I had my herbs there. I had my mind there. All my professions were there. I didn't have to run around going and farming herbs and stuff. I just picked my flowers and planted more. And it was, I, I liked it. Yeah. So, so Wad to me was not big. And, and Shadowlands, I hated the Maw. I hated Torghast. Most people did not yeah. like the Maw. Yeah, uh, but I was fast. a druid, so at least <laughs> I got to write a travel thing. But, but the, to me, the, uh, mm. The dungeons were some of the best. I did not like BFA dungeons as well. From this is personal. I did not like BFA dungeons as well. A freehold, yep, that was all right. But motherload, I was always backing into something. I, it, right. And I was new at really Mythic Plus. I I did it earlier, but I I was so scared. They would tell me it's a fifteen, right. and then I'd get in there it was a seventeen, and then I would panic. But like. Now, I am not happy with Siege of Boralus coming back. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know. I'm not looking forward to that. That thing. Yeah, that thing is horrible. <laughs> no, that, that last boss, I'm always the last because I'm healing. Cross the plank and down he goes. He slams me and, I, and I'm in the water and I'm dead and I'm gone. But Shadowlands, I, I liked Shadowlands dungeons. Uh, Dragonflight ones, you know, the more you... Uh, right. Azrael calls them my homework runs. So if I wipe, I'm trying not to <laughs> be as. I, I really I am hard on myself, though, because <laughs> I I, mm -hmm. I would depleted the key. Dang, what did I do wrong? And Azrael will go, stop it. Right now, I know what you're going to say. That's why you improve so fast, because you're always asking yourself, like, how could you have done better? And I think that's amazing. Oh, I don't know if I improved so fast. How long have we had Ruby out and the second boss was killing me over and over and over? And now I look at it and go, it's not even hard. Why did I make it so difficult? Okay, we got ads, bait. It's going to be a bigger thing, bait. Baiting is not hard. You see a red, a red puddle, go behind the boss. I'm going... Why did I make that so difficult? It doesn't mean I'm not going to die on the trash, but that boss is not, is, you know, but it took me a long time to learn that. And, and between Mythic Plus and Raiding though, which one, do, do you prefer either one or you love them, love to play them both? Uh, I would have said two years ago, probably Raiding would, I would, well, I started right. pushing myself in Shadowlands. Mm. I was only doing like two a week just to get KSM and BFA. I started pushing mm. myself stuck just with my druids so I could learn one class. Uh, no, Kuhn, Megagon Workshop. Yes, Azrael, she's my coach. And she tells you, Grandma, this is your script. Don't. And, and I'm not afraid Amazing. of Brackenhide's first boss anymore, right, Azrael? But she gave me a script. That's one thing streaming has taught. I was in my own gaming yeah, world then you meet all these until I great started people, streaming. You know? Oh yeah, I feel so blessed and so lucky, and 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 I love them. They're so. I just I love my viewers, but I have learned so much, and I think I'm becoming a better player. Um, so I can't <laughs> use age as getting worse, right? I got to continue to get better. Can you give me some life advice? Because I, I, you know, I find it inspirational that at your age, you still have this fire in you to 
I want to do better. I want to beat the bosses. Like, um, you know, what would you give in terms of life advice for, for someone to continue to be so passionate and energetic, like even at your age and you play well every day, you stream every day, like what keeps you going? Like what advice, life advice would you give? But I don't you think it's just the personality? I mean, if somebody doesn't have that, you know, I have people say, how can I get my mom to do this? Uh, she has to have her own drive. Everybody has a drive and some, I don't have a drive to make Afghans. I don't have a drive to crochet or, in fact, one grandson, when I, my back went out while we were halfway up Mount Adams said, Grandma, when you get old, don't knit. You can cook, but don't knit because my mom, my mom had arthritis and her hands were crippled, but she would knit and knit Afghans and stuff. So. I've always, he's 34 now and he, and I, but I didn't want to knit anyway, but he said, don't knit because I don't know. I, I mean, the same with mountain climbing and I mean, raising kids. I wanted a dozen kids. My goal in life was to be a mom. When I was young, my goal was to be a mom and I got to raise six and then we had the mountains and then we have the game. I don't know. It's, I would say mostly it's personality. So I, I mean, there may be some moms and grandmas out there. They have to have the desire though. They don't have to push themselves. If they just want to collect mounts and, and pets and, and, and those, there's so much in wow that can be for anybody. You don't, you know, I, I know I don't want to go back to Cata. I've been there. I mean, I look at mop and go, yeah, I know all those boss fights. I, I don't maybe remember all the mechanics, but I remember I watched the raid world first for Cata. And I remember the trash getting to Chogol was terrible, you know, and, and but we didn't clear three three raids in one day. Question, how was it like going to BlizzCon and, and meeting all these people who watch your stream? Like, how did that feel? BlizzCon is a highlight. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever get to go to BlizzCon. And <clears throat> So I, I mean, I had people help me get a ticket yep. and then it ended up that Blizzard gave me a media pass. So I gave, I gave my ticket that I bought away to a kid and mm. so that I could pass it forward somewhat and meeting everybody. I, I, there's, I, there's so many people I didn't get to meet, you know, but I got to meet Max and Kalamazi and I got to meet people from U Europe. I got to meet Logan from Australia and Panda TV and Hottie Chicken and, I got to meet uh, Skull and and yeah. and Maris and and uh, you know a girl came on the other day and she said I'm from I'm from so from Switzerland and she said I met you and I said oh you're the one from Switzerland that gave me the Swiss chocolate yeah you remember uh, of course I remember I love chocolate you know I remember Panda TV coming up do you like chocolate yes so uh, I was disappointed yeah. that we don't have a BlizzCon this year. And yes, I got to meet Nagaru and I mean, yeah. but I'm, I don't want to throw out names mm -hmm. because I met so many people. I got to, like I said, I got to meet the seven year old that's now older and Bucci. We got to meet Tomcat tour. I mean, but viewers that uh, little line, I can think of so many of you that, uh, and I may not remember all the names live streaming the privilege of getting to live stream. I and I said, Max, yeah. Uh, I was scared. I brought my stuff. Tomcat has always, Tomcat has helped me through. When I get in trouble with something <laughs> technical, Tomcat right. or plated, you know, they, they are so helpful to me because Tomcat's gotten me out of, he said, you know, you'll say your bit rate's <laughs> down. What? I didn't even know what bit rate was, but I do now. But so, uh, I found out that basically I was the only one that got to really stream. I got to stream. We did, what, what keys did we do? 17s, I guess we did. Right. Back when a 17 was not bad. So we did three hours of that. And, and so, um, I mean, I, I met so many. And I apologize if I didn't say your name because I can't say everybody's name. I met so many people. I mean, I, I remember... I was looking for the media to go because I, I, I went to, when did we live stream? 
the Friday, Friday we live stream. So I went to the in the, the the morning thing, and then I thought I forgot my mouse, so I had to go back to the hotel. It took me an hour and a half to get back to the hotel because people go, <laughs> "Are you wow, Grandma? Can I have my picture?" And I was like, <laughs> just floored. So I I got back, and so I was looking to have lunch at the in the media thing upstairs, and and this lady come and she said, "I can help you," and she said, "I'm Maria Hamilton." Wow. And I said, it's nice yeah. to meet you. Later, I found out that Maria Hamilton is somebody. I, I I apologize. I didn't know who she was at the time. So she just talked and we talked and we. she helped me get to the media room. And then later when she spoke, <laughs> I went, oh, my gosh, I was Maria Hamilton. And I, I didn't. I, but I didn't know because for except for these four years, yeah. I was just caught up in my guild and and I you know, I didn't know. I never was outside right. of it. Streaming is so exciting. If you've never done it, I don't care if you got five people, just 10 people, you know. But the viewers, I have found out, I'll open up my messy bags and I go, I can't find, it's in the third bag, <laughs> fifth over. And I'm like, how do you see that already? You know, I've learned a lot from you from this short interview already. But um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are aspiring streamers. Like back in the days when your friend was telling you, you know, stream, hit the live button and you were resistant against the fact. But if there's people out there who are aspiring streamers, they want to be a streamer like you, what kind of advice would you give people like that? Like, How do you get into streaming? Well, I've had mm. uh, several people and one just lately. But I said... Okay, I don't. I have a hundred and ten thousand yeah. plus followers. Do we have a hundred and ten thousand on at night? No. I said I would imagine that most of them are curious about a grandma playing WoW, and many don't ever come back, and many do. You know, but mm. that and that's just streaming. You know, so when you look at the numbers, um, I think a lot of it was curiosity. So I told them you yeah. need to be yourself. Of course, I add be, you know, expect to be respected. If that's what, if you don't want that, mm -hmm. then I'm sorry, that, that's your thing. But you need to have a niche because there's so many streamers out there. If you don't have something that's unique, uh, you're probably going to get into the fold because they wanted to know how they could make their lifetime living. I said, I have 110,000 followers. I do not make a living that I would live alone. I, live, right. I mean, I can pay my car insurance. I was able to get Zoe yeah. back surgery and I'm making payments, yeah. but those payments are a thousand a month. I wouldn't be able to do that without that. But to be able to buy a house and support a family on streaming, that's difficult. And um, I, I don't yeah. really know how to answer that, except I, I, I would say be yourself, keep a schedule, I mean, if, if it's going to be three days a week, then keep it three days a week so that they right. know for sure when they're going to be on. And um, what do you want people to think of you? I mean, I, I be honest. I, I told them to be honest, be yourself. I, I, would, mm. I expect to be respected. I respect others right. and I expect to be respected. Yeah, that's and, a great answer. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't really don't know what else... I don't want to discourage yeah. them because streaming is awesome. Um, no, anyway, that's a great answer. Uh, we're coming up to the hour mark now and I wanted to save time, some time for like fun questions uh, because, you know, most of the questions so far has been kind of about your journey and, and your life experiences. I, lo I love to kind of do some fun questions, right? Um, earlier, I, I, I heard you mention that I think you have six druids now. What is it about druids that you just kind of like? Because you seem to love them a lot. <laughs> Fits my play style, one thing. Uh, I play with the mouse in the left hand, and I and I cannot <laughs> have buttons on the side because I squeeze my mouse <laughs> like you're gonna take it away from me. So I have a I have button on top. I love the shape of this one Corsair one, but it's right. This is not a Corsair, and I'm sponsored sure. by Corsair, so I won't give a brand. But I. Mm cannot have buttons on the side. So I don't have very many mm. buttons, but I do use the mouse over. Then I play on the right side of mm. the keyboard. So I have the arrow keys and then I have delete in, page down, uh, insert home and page up. 
Those are the six hotkeys. Right. Then my thumb hits control, and I have six more of those hotkeys. I do not. I have a fault. Uh, I do not strafe. I have tried to make the right. left and right arrows to strafe, and they just laughed at me because I. Yeah, you're just not used to it. It didn't work. Mm. Strafing is important, so I get I get bit a lot mm. by mechanics by turning and running. I think we were all taught to play a certain way, but I, I just love how you solve the problem yourself. Like, okay, I'll use the mouse on my left hand and I'll use the, the arrow buttons a, as my keybinds. And I think that's like kind of smart, actually. Um, that's pretty smart. And, the, and those six buttons and then my thumb on control, you know, uh, of course the jump key, if right. you use the space bar, it's too far away. Uh -huh. So I tried to make the num lock button, but sometimes the num lock uh, uh, is to do with a seven, which is right there to jump, but... I am mm. not using foot pedals because I have my feet up so <laughs> that they're not dragging on the floor. So Tessa keeps trying yeah. to tell me to use foot pedals and I'm sure they're great. I can just see that. So, yeah. So what was the yeah. question? Go. Why do I like druids? Okay. So then it mm. just fits my play style for the rejuve and, and the different stuff. I mean, I played in in mop. I I healed with a pally. I healed with a priest. I healed with a shaman. I healed with a druid. I healed with them. Pallies were different back then, and uh, I don't like melee. And when they say stand in melee, I'm going. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I want to be in right. melee, but I have to be in melee sometimes. So yeah, um, you just gravitate. I don't know. It just yeah. fits. So I, in BFA, I played, yeah, BFA, I played mm. Druid and Monk. I, I did the Monk a little bit. So I've got them all leveled. I have all the healers leveled. And I fumbled around, even at Halloween, I fumbled around on the, right. the horseman thing. I, all I did on the Monk is spin around and hope I could get the thing done. Right. You know, it's like, no, Druids just fit my play style. I, I love my Druids. And they go, well, why do you have so many? Well, because... I like to raid, uh -huh. so obviously you raid two days a week. Then I, I kind of got messed up because I was raiding Tuesday, wow. Thursday with one per, one group, and then Wednesday, Monday with another group, and then I would go on Wednesday after right. the raid ended and raid on another one, and then I raided on Friday and Saturday. So you, you raid with so many different kind of like teams and guilds, right? Like how are you like in all these um, guilds? Are you like vocal? Do you like talking to people when you're raiding? Like, or, or are you just like, you know, zoned in and just playing your character? Oh, I'm, um, well, of course I've done with, I did a, um, I had, mm -mm. well, I'm only in one guild. Then the other two, ah. then the two other two druids are in my own guilds. They wanted me to form a guild. So I have one that's, that's called clever, Grand Babies yeah. and one that's called Camelot Reborn. And, but you know what? You cannot stream and pug and mm. run a guild. If you're going to run a guild, you need to be there. All your characters basically need to be there. And right. you need to be there supporting your other people in there. They had high yeah. hopes for Camelot. It just didn't work. So I, I joined a mythic, because right. I, I want to do mythic. And what we're finding right. is we cleared heroic on Tuesday. So we didn't raid on Wednesday. There was nobody wanted to do anything. We were hoping to do mythic. Well, then they didn't want to do, they're going to go remix or they're going to do Kata and I'm going. So I joined a pug and right. somebody, and I joined their discord and somebody said, we have a grandma in here. And somebody else says, yeah, you're famous. Yeah. Is that wow, grandma? And I went, the next thing I know, they're coming onto the stream. And, and so we got the first Mythic Boss done and it was fun. And it's funny because they said we need to be <laughs> watch our language. Yeah. They know where, when I go, they know. And I, 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 it's so awesome that mm. they're, they, they want to be respectful. You know, yeah. I, I just find that, I find that pretty cool. I've, I've another fun question for you because we are going into the War Within, right? New expansion. And you've seen so many expansions since you started playing WoW. Um, how do you feel about the War Within? Like, is there anything you like to change about WoW? Like any ideas or, or thoughts there? Or, or it doesn't matter to you, it's always great. <laughs> uh, well, I've been in Alpha. I have not done as much as I would probably like. I would be right. an alpha over remix any day. 
But my viewers, I don't want to spoil anything for them. So all they really see is me fly around. So all I've done is the first two dungeons. And I, so I have flown around and I haven't mm. done this. My beta is coming out on the 5th. So I will probably do more. But I need to respect those that are into the story. And those are mm. that because yeah, yeah. the first part of the story is, I, I, I've got some pictures that I, I'm going to put up eventually because uh, I took yeah, old I and new. Mean, yeah. And you know what? And, uh, and so anyway, but the fourth zone, I don't know <laughs> about that. I'm glad we're flying. I don't like bugs. I don't right. know if they'd be any better as crabs, but, uh, it, it, I haven't right. got to play the content. So I just know that right. it's kind of dark and we'll see. I, I, I just don't mm. want Blizzard to quit. I, I don't know if anybody feels like, but I mm. love my characters, like I said before. And I used to, back in the day, I go, if this game ever quit, what would happen to my characters? I don't want to not have them anymore. I still, I got too much, I mean, 900 yeah, and some yes. days on one character. I added them up. I'm over, I'm over 2,200 hours or days. I'm over like 2,190 something days in this game. That's a lot of my life, but I don't. I don't play in the daytime normally. Oh, wait, hang on. Other than what, what do you do? Like, what's what's your what's your schedule like? Uh, well, if I go to bed at five thirty, I I'm up like nine, and then I'm a zombie, but I'm up. Man, it's crazy. How are you so four alert? to five hours? I don't I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. I don't drink That's alcohol. Crazy. I drink water. Uh, yes, sometimes less. But some days I'm really, they'll watch me yawning. But last night I get into remix and I start yawning because I'm really bored with that. I don't want to do that. And so I, and I'm trying to, because I have gained some weight being here and I don't like it. I'm not obese, but I don't like that because right. I eat like 25 Werther's a night. And so I not having anything to eat at night. So I went and found some <laughs> chips that I shouldn't have been into it too. And then I woke up because I... But right. I that I need excitement and I need if chat gets if chat gets quiet, mm. which it was very quiet last night at two in the morning, then I'm talking to myself. Uh, I Werther's does not want to sponsor me. I asked them. And and what do you do in the day? What do you do in the day when you wake up? Uh, well, I've taken up line dancing now, and I'm going to the pool to exercise. I That's direct crazy. the adult choir for Christmas. I used to do. Kids I used to do kids choir until the pandemic. I was doing kids choir. Pandemic is what put got us in the house more. And so, um, you know, Fridays is a hair appointment and Zoe doesn't like me gone too much. I, in the winter time when it's not 103 and up, then I can walk and do stuff. And, you know, I, um, I'm not a big right. shopper unless it's at a computer store. So I do that online. I said, when I had this, got this new case and this new computer, I said, how many 82 year old women get excited over a computer? Like you must be one of the rare breeds. Uh, that's absolutely insane. Okay, so another question, another fun question for you. Let's say you were to do like the mom thing all over again, right? And your kids at age seven, right? They start playing WoW and they get absolutely hooked on WoW. They don't give a shit about school. What kind of advice would you give them? Because you've done the mom thing. Like, do you think gaming is, is, is good? Like, you know, for, for kids? I'm asking because I grew up with very strict parents. I wish my mom played well, you know, like, like you did. Um, what kind of, what's your take on kids playing well? Kids need to mm. have a social life in real life. They need to be outside some. I, I would uh, restrict them to... Their get, mm. grades would have to be the most important. And then um, I would get them, but our kids were always in, involved in Little League and soccer and, you know, tennis and, and wrestling. I mean, as six kids, I was going up and down the hill stuff. We didn't, we had an Atari, I think they played or something that you drove a car or something, but they really weren't, I mean, uh, education is the most important and they need to have, a social life outside of gaming. So it's called balance. So I would teach them balance with their life because what you teach them 
when a child reaches five years old, they are pretty mm. much formed in what they're going to be like. So those first five years mm. are extremely important. And um, I didn't, my kids were not easy to raise. I had five boys, three were stepchildren. I was married for 43 years, but my husband and I were the Brady Bunch. So I had an 11 year old, a nine year old, and a seven year old, and he had a seven year old, a nine year old, a seven year old, and a five year old, and they all lived with us and I raised them all. But uh, my two boys are great adults, but they were not easy to raise, you know, and, and, and it's, it's sad that parents can't be home with their kids now because I know that my kids mm. liked having me home as a mom so that they could say, hi, mom, you know, and maybe tell me what happened at school or something. I'm old fashioned. I know. I'm sorry. But but even not mm. being old fashioned, I think in our life, we need balance. And so I don't sit at right. the computer all day and all night. And uh, I try to do other things. I, I've thought about taking a course to learn how to do some of this technology stuff better, you know, or something. I'm, I mean, I'm right. constantly trying to learn and be better. And there's things that I can't do, just like the camera thing to get this set up. It yeah. was like, you know, it, I would like to be better at some of that. But then I go, mm, do I really want to do that? Then I go, I should go learn Spanish. Do I really want to do that? You know, but I don't know. So balance in life, I think, is important. I, I've got one last question for you. And this is something that I think, um, you know, I, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about how to ask this question because I feel like in different phases of my life, I see life differently. And you have this ideal lifestyle that um, I, I want to have, ideally, when I'm, you know, the same age as you in my 70s, I hope. You know, I continue to live this dream of like just playing games and talking about games. But, you know, having the experience of going through a corporate job, raising kids, and then now, you know, kind of being really big in this in this wild community, like what what advice would you give someone like in my in my I'm in my 35, sorry, I'm in my mid-30s. Is there anything you felt you wanted to do differently in life? Um, and I never really had a clear sense of direction. And even now, like, you know, I love creating content, but I always ask myself, like, what what do I want to do in 10 years, 20 years? I do not know the answer. And did you know the answer, like, when you were my age? Yeah, I knew it. Well, at that time, I had the kids that I wanted. Um, I, I've always, I mean, I've had goals like I wanted a horse. I got to have a horse. Uh, and, I mean, all all my life, I've had... And they laughed at me the other day. I was showing a picture of my horse and I said, yeah, I had cap guns on each side. I played, I taught it to rear like the Lone Ranger's horse. And they go, Grandma, really? I go, I, got, I mean, you know, uh, I've always had goals of some sort. And like I said, family for me. Nowadays, families don't seem to happen as early. I had my first one at 20. So that my kids were pretty much grown by that time. I and forties was my best. I was in the best shape. I was. I could carry a seventy-pound pack, and I have a picture of it. I mean, I was in good shape. Uh, but I had a new goal. It was the mountain, and <clears throat> and my grandkids were important. I took them hiking everywhere. These two boys. I, you know, like I said. Uh, but anything maybe. Streaming, I did not really have a goal goal because I didn't know anything about it, right? But I knew what, I know that in my guild, we were PG pretty much. And um, towards the end of it, it lightened up some, I didn't like it. And somebody, I remember somebody coming on, Grandma, how did you allow that to start to change? And I had to look at myself and go, did I just... Not because we weren't live anywhere and I didn't like it, but I, they were a tank and I needed a tank and I kind of, and that was a real focus of that. Don't let this change. I mean, I need to continue to be who I am and run things how I am. And, and the person that asked me for some advice, I, he said, well, I need to clean up the cussing. I, I said, you need to run your stream how you want to run it. Don't, I mean, those are my standards. If, if that's not your standard, that's up to you. But the main thing is you need to 
to respect yourself and expect to be respected whatever you do. I just, and, and you can't love some, I don't want to make it sound like love is an ego thing because it's not, but you, if you don't like yourself, you tend to not like other people. And I, I don't like with wow is the hardest thing I've ever done. Even climbing the mountain was easier than wow because the mechanics in wow are difficult. And I, I get so frustrated that I can't maneuver as well as I want because I expect so much of myself. I also felt like I've learned so much from just this short, you know, one and a half hours with you. I felt like I have a different perspective of wow. Um, you know, sometimes it's easy for, for people like like me who, to complain about, oh, I, I don't like this part of wow. Like, you know, that, that part wasn't the best. And, you know, but just hearing your love for this game kind of, you know, evolves through the years and, and you've always loved raiding and you don't really give a shit about the lore. It doesn't matter, but you just committed to your characters. I think that's truly inspirational. And, um, you know, it's a good reminder for me of what really matters to me in my life as well. I love your story about how, you know, you you kind of picked up gaming when you were you were post retirement, and it just kind of reminds you that it's never too late to start something. And I think that's the biggest takeaway for me. You know, um, oh. that that whatever sh whatever situation we are in our life, be it my viewers, your viewers, doesn't matter. Like whatever situation you're in in life right now, it's never too late to start something or start doing something. And I think. That's one of the biggest lessons I've taken away uh, from just talking to you. And I really appreciate you sharing your, your life experience. Because like I said, I grew up with, um, you know, Asian parents and, and, you know, my grandmother and grandfather knew nothing about gaming, right? So I was a very misunderstood kind of individual growing up. And just being able to hear you talk about your life experience, um, you know, I can relate a lot to that. And I really appreciate it. So. Well, my mother, when she was alive, uh, she said, I don't like you being a bear. I said, I said, mother, it's a computer game. You know, they just didn't understand. I remember it was uh, in Kara, the boss that we had to circle up and my son would go around, circle up, everybody, circle up, circle up, circle up. And then they would just make fun of me. But I will tell you that my family is not making fun of me anymore. And my daughter, she's got, she's a high school French teacher and she has a this wheel she says, mother, I need some pictures signed by you because I have this wheel. And if it goes on, you know, she had like M&Ms right. and she had a picture of herself and stuff. And of course, her, wow, her kids know crazy. that I stream. And they, they go, they go, Mrs. Missouri, can we watch Wild Grammar for just a few minutes? So all of a sudden they came on and Cheryl says, or my moderator says, I think that your daughter's on. And I went, uh, and so she let them watch, but it'll it'll spin and it'll come to her picture. And they said, can we trade that for while grandma's picture? And she said, no, you can't. And she said, I had a student come in for for the new semester. And he said, do you have any pictures of while grandma left? That's crazy. I'm going, really? Yeah, you are a celebrity now. <laughs> just, That's crazy. But they're teenagers and I can show them that it can be clean and fun yeah, and they can they're safe to and, see me. You see what I yeah, mean? And you get the vibe and, from the community like, you know, it's PG, everyone's respectful. And I think, you know, that's why the kids, you know, are feel so safe in, in your community as well, right? So that's that's amazing. I just want to say like, it's crazy because I've I've never imagined that playing WoW could let me meet such cool people like, like yourself. Honestly, like it's just crazy to think that a game that is full of just pixels can can let us just have a conversation like that. I think that's that's really nice. I am truly blessed. And to meet you, that's just awesome and and max was uh like i said he was the first one i met and and you know even max has balanced turned around and balancing mm -hmm. his life again he's playing hockey again and he's uh lost some weight and he's realizing the importance of balance so i think balance is a big word and have fun. I mean, I, I still like to go. I go to Throne of Thunder and I look at the architecture yeah. of that before you enter. It's beautiful. And I and I, I look at WoW, the little things in WoW besides a, a squirrel running. I mean, if you look at all the details in WoW, like a squirrel running across the room. I mean, they thought of everything. And when I was at BlizzCon, I got to meet, she was, Kiki was head of 
animation or in big in animation was talking about just how uh, the movement of one foot mm. of a dragon or the or the tail. I mean, and she said everything in WoW has a death animation. I mean, I met Kalamazi and I met uh, Elsmere. Elsmere got to ride in the car and and Miss Bunt and the Bunton. The Bunton is on right now. She's awesome. I have met her in Seattle three years in a row now, and she took such her and Dyrub took such good care of me, and Ket Ketiket took such good care of me when I was there. And she laughed because she said, on sat on Friday Friday morning, I got up on my own, and she's and Ket helped me find my way to to the main mm. arena for the first thing, and and she goes. I lost you. You ran off them away from me. And then she thought the first night on Thursday night when we had we had a BlizzCon private party and we had a Raider IO party. And then she thought she was putting me to bed. And I called Ket up and I said, Do you want to meet downstairs? <laughs> well, that's where I met Kiki and JJ. And she said she went to bed at one. I said, We closed <laughs> it up. We went to bed at two. I wasn't going to go to bed. I did 12,000 steps that day. Uh, well, I appreciate Likewise. you so much for. When Quasi first approached me, um, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what, but I appreciate this very much. Again, not buttering you up, but I, I've always wanted to kind of talk to you because, again, I think there's so much I can learn just from just how you approach life and wow. And those are, you know, one of my biggest passions as well. And, um, you know, if we have this next here, I will definitely want to meet you in person. Uh, I'll buy you. I'll buy you a drink if you're up for it. Absolutely. And, and let's just hang out. Thank you so much, Wow Grandma. Thank you so much for not just being on the show, but also just sharing your Thank life you, experience and lessons. I felt I learned so much from you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank give you so much. Speak soon. Thank you. Take care, Wow Grandma. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> And that's the entire episode with Wild Grandma. I hope you enjoyed it. And speaking about enjoyment, all our Patreon subscribers get to view the unedited and no S version of this podcast. If you'd like to support us, you can find the link to our Patreon in the description. And speaking about our Patreons, a big shout out to all the Patreon subscribers on screen who makes this podcast even possible. Thank you for being here for us. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll see you in the next weekly episode.